Sup guys, it's your boy Justin with uh, this year, uh, this year's first comic book review. Today we're reviewing Avengers Forever, written by Kurt Busiek with art by Carlos Pacheco. This is a this is a twelve issue graphic novel that collects the twelve issue limited series from uh, I think it was like nineteen ninety eight through nineteen ninety nine, right? Uh, this graphic, this graphic novel was printed in 2011, though, and it collects all 12 issues of that series. It's rated teen for teen, uh, T for Teen, and goes for 30 U.S., 33 Canadian. I paid like, I think I paid like uh, uh, around 40 bucks for it actually. <laughs> and it, oh, it's also co-written by R Roger Stern. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So. Um, this book is about how in the in the future, right? Um, Rick Jones, who you'll know from if you ever read like Hulk, uh, Incredible Hulk series. Apparently, he was one one of the influential, um, you know, was an influential character in the founding of the Avengers. And how in the future, right, um, Rick, uh, Rick Jones gets a, uh, unleashes a power called the Destiny Force, and in the future, he he basically becomes the God Emperor of Mankind and creates an army of like an army where, that emulates the Avengers, right? <laughs> so you can see as like Cap. Captain uh, Iron Man troops, Captain America, sorry, Captain America troops, four troops, Ant Man troops, right? Yeah, and um, the Timekeepers, uh, you'll you'll know you might know these characters from the uh, Loki TV show, but the Timekeepers uh, see this future and are like, we need to do something about mankind, right? So yeah, the the book starts off with. Uh, Rick, Rick Jones is sick, and the Avengers uh, take him to the moon, where they keep, where Shield keeps the um, supreme intelligence, right? Who is basically Zordon <laughs> from Power Rangers, right? And Z Zordon, Zordon, sorry, uh, the, the Supermar or the supreme intelligence, right? is in league with Libra and Kang, right, who wants to help the, uh, help Rick Jones and the Avengers stop the Timekeepers from wiping out, uh, wiping out Rick Jones and wiping out humanity, right? So, like, here, like, what, what happens is that, like, Immortus, who is, like, a future version of, of, uh, Kang the Conqueror, right, uh, send, sends Tempest to kill, to till to kill Rick Jones, right? But Kang shows up to stop him, right? And Immortal Mortis sends like an army, right? And and Rick Jones, with the help of Libra and the su super intelligence, unleashes his Destiny Force power and summons a team of Avengers throughout time to protect him, right? And the, these are like our main characters. You have Giant Man, Hank Pym, Giant Man, Janet Van Dien, Wasp, Clint Barton, wearing his like his Goliath costume. I guess, I guess there was a point in time where Clint Barton was a Hawkeye. Uh, right after like I. I guess they were fighting some interstellar war, and he lost his size-changing powers. So he was like a Hawkeye wearing the, his Goliath costume with only with no trick arrows, only his regular arrows. You have Songbird, who was a villain turned superhero Avenger in the future, right? You have uh, Janice, who is the son of Captain Marvel, who becomes Captain Marvel. You have another Hank Pym uh, yellow jacket, and you have. Captain America after Secret Empire, where he's basically in a bad time in his life, right? And these guys have to protect protect Rick Jones, right, from 
uh, Immortus and the Timekeepers, right? While at the same time going on missions throughout time to figure out how to stop Immortus and the Timekeepers, right? And sometimes they run into Kang and Kang's on their side and sometimes Kang is on the other. Uh, Kang is a bad guy, right? Which Kang is usually a bad guy. Right, so here, here's Libra, who's who was um, originally from Zodiac, the supervillain team, right? But like now he's like a good guy who tries to serve the balance, right? He's like now a cosmic kind of character, right? And uh, this this book was pretty cool because our our characters go like lots of different locations. There's a there's a section where they go into the into a future where Humanity nearly gets wiped out by Martians, right? And there's only like 50,000 people left. And the Avengers, right? The Avengers uh, at the time are led by uh, an older Black Panther, Kill Raven, Crimson Dynamo. Here they are, right? You have Kill Raven, right? Uh, Fundra, Black Panther, Crimson Dynamo, and a pregnant. Jocasta, right? Right. There's also a point where they go to, like, the 50s and they encounter Golden Age Marvel superheroes like 3D Man. Like 3D Man. Uh, sorry, 3D Man. Uh, Marvel Boy, the Iranian. Uh, I forget her name. <laughs> Miss Venus. Human Robot. And uh, I think his name is Gorilla or something. Right. Yeah. Apparently, these guys will become like agent uh, agents of Atlas, right? Which is like a two like a aughts team, right? There's also a point in where they go, in, where another team goes into the past, and they meet up with West Marvel Western superheroes like the Rawhide Kid, uh, the Black Rider, Reno Jones, Kid Cassidy. There's a I'm not too familiar with the um, with. And by the way, was that guy, was that FBI agent supposed to be a, like a reference to Tommy Lee Jones from Men in Black? I think it was, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was cool. All right. Yeah, they, they go all over the place, and they even give you a recap on Kang's origin story. Right? Here's Kang without the mask. He looks just like... Um, he looks just like Immortus. And here's like Kang's origin story. He's like fucking crazy. <laughs> He's both the descendant of Rick of uh, Reed Richards and Victor Von Doom. <laughs> right? Which is like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Alright. But yeah, like uh at the at the end of the book, like the uh, the Avengers have to fight the Timekeepers, right? And the Timekeepers summon an army of evil Avengers to defeat them, right? Which, uh, here's the evil Avengers, right? Um, yeah. And then, like, you know, Rick Jones, with the help of an older version of himself, who's, who's bonded to Captain Martin... Captain Marvel summons a summons an army of good Avengers, right? And if you look closely, you can see the Earth X Captain America and Earth X Daredevil, right? And there's lots of well, there's lots of crazy cameos, right? There's even Red Guardians there, like crazy cameo. Look, Cage, like. N Namor Rita or Namora, I can't, I can never tell the difference. Yeah, they show up. So, what did I think about this book? I heard this. Well, I'm, I originally picked this up because I, oh, back in the, you know, when I picked this up like a year or two ago, I can't remember. I picked it up because oh, it looked cool and it was by. I wanted to read an Avengers book and it's by Kurt Busiek, so I thought it was good. But I, I heard recently from um, Spoonie Bard. Check out his channel if you if you're not aware of him. Uh, he, he's also a Canadian comic reviewer, right? And he also does, like, uh, movie reviews and anime reviews, right? And he said this series was pretty good. And I, since I had this in my backlog, I thought I would check it out. And I would say I did enjoy this book. 
The art is not the greatest because this was like 90s, like late 90s Marvel, where a lot of their best artists went to went to uh, create <laughs> Image Comics. So the art is not the greatest, but it's serviceable. The action was good, right? The characters looked cool, right? I'm not a fan of some of the designs, right? But you know, it was cool. The the Writing at first, I was not a huge fan of the dialogue, but then it made sense when you consider like, oh, some of these characters are supposed to be from like the 50s and like the 70s, and that's why the, some of the dialogue uh, was not great, <laughs> which doesn't make that much sense when like, okay, you have characters from modern day, right, and you have characters from that, from the you know, 70s and 50s, and they don't look that much <laughs> old, uh, younger, sorry, uh, th their modern versions don't look that much older than their older, sorry, their, you know, uh, older iterations, right, but that's whatever, <laughs> that's comic book bullshit in general, but overall, I thought this was a fun, uh, adventure series, right, um, but it, if you're someone who's, like, into, like, wants to get into, like, Avengers, right? They do, like, spoil shit that, ha like, spoil shit and, like, you know, uh, like, spoil shit, like, that happens, like, you know, dur during their more famous uh, runs, right? But, you know, besides from that, right, I mean, I did feel like I did get a little lost with all their references and shit, but they do explain stuff well, and, you know, this is... This is supposed to be like a like you know a random like new team right where they just got like random like a adventures throughout time right because it kind of has that exiles feel to it before it, it's funny this was like an Avengers version of exiles but then like the last exiles I read was like basically Avengers version of exiles right by Jeff Parker but overall. Uh, I enjoyed this book. It was a fun. It was a fun read with lots of action, right? Lots of cool cameos, right? Uh, even like the old versions of the Guardians of the Galaxy show show up, but it's not them. It's our characters disguised as the, as the Guardians of the Galaxy while they fight like uh, the uh, Warhammer 40k version of the Avengers, right? That was cool <laughs> because the old like. Guardians of the Galaxy were from like uh, year three thousand or some shit. So okay, that made sense, <laughs> right? But all, yeah, I enjoyed this book, right? And uh, I would give it, you know, eight eight out of ten. It was a fun read, and if you can get this book for, I would say, less than forty bucks, it's worth it, right? So our next review is going to be. Um, Common Writer Zero One, which is, this is like a late, by Titan Comics. This is like a more recent comic. I want I need to read this soon so I can decide if I want to put this on my my pull list. Even though it's probably too late to get issue uh, two, right? But yeah, we'll check the. We're supposed to do a review for this, but TV for the TV show. But I keep putting it off. But at some point, we're gonna do a, a review for Common Writer Zero One, right? After after my Captain Harlock anime review is done. We're going to do a re review for this show eventually, right? Yeah. Um, January is supposed to be Image Month. So, after this, we're going to review a bunch of Image comic series. Especially since I have a huge... I bought a bunch of 90s Image comics last... Uh, you know, it la like in the last six months. So, we're going to review a lot of them.